The Battle for Social Rehabilitation. Friendship. Is this a story about my life? <laughs> He's supposed to be a hostage, but I feel bad for him. Oh, it's the Prime Minister. What? Is that who you are? <laughs> he didn't even know. The guy's not up on politics. Holy cow. <laughs> to the Prime Minister. You're part of the group that This guy is interesting. How could you not know? Even Mob is like, what the heck, dude? The president said most people had already evacuated beforehand. This guy's not evil. It just seems like he's trusting to a fault. I mean, let me not get too ahead of myself. He's seemingly the second in command in this bid for world domination, and he's probably lethal with that umbrella. Speaking of Dragon Ball Z, in that show, even starting from Dragon Ball, defeating the villains doesn't mean, or doesn't always mean, absolute annihilation of the villains. It means being so good, speaking specifically of Goku, and living by such a powerful example that the villains can't help but fall into that gravity and become better themselves and put all their energy to more productive uses. That also happens to be Mob's impact. That's sort of what's so compelling about watching these side characters sort of fall into his gravity and become so good that they become their own self-generating sources of that very thing. That's also a parallel with Fruits Basket, come to think of it. I said it to say, this guy <laughs> seems like a pretty easy convert. It seems like he was perhaps isolated and therefore sort of malleable to whoever came along first, which happened to be, I don't care about anything and that makes me strong, dude. Considering the hell that was my life, you could say he rescued me. There it is, yeah. Here's some backstory. What a pigsty. You've lived like this for 15 years. <laughs> That's how you win friends and influence people. People bullied you out of your place in society, didn't they? Well, but, yeah. It's... You see, I'm an esper too. He's one step above him, at least. I shall give you purpose. Whenever I do, I get dizzy. Oh, it's a shield. The umbrella is a metaphor for their whole relationship. You'll be fine if you're with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't you think that's kind of weird? Huh? Oh, it's kind of judgy for mom. <laughs> Aren't you basically being used here? Say what? Not wrong. Rude. What a completely horrible thing to say. You're the one who's horrible. If this was all you were Man, going Mob to is do, going for the jugular. Stay to shut in. Damn, mom. <laughs> Brutal. I'm going to have to ask you to leave again. No, Sarizawa. Well, this peaceful recruitment is not going the way I thought it might. <laughs> yeah, but he's no weakling, obviously. When I'm under this, I feel safe. It's just like being in my room. Well, that explains sort of the fight. There's like an ide ideological thing happening under the surface. There's a reality he, he can't face. He's still hiding. And Mob represents that reality, maybe. Is it gonna work? That hurt. Oh, oh I still can't after all. Are you okay? <laughs> Ouch. You were faking. Oh, got me. He finally found someone who understood him and had no choice but to follow. Yeah, he understood yeah. a chance against someone who used that to their advantage. While I'm listing references for anime, that's a really big thing in My Hero Academia, where a lot of people's success or failure comes down to who comes along at the right time or wrong time. I know and I'm deeply terrified by the phenomenon of having a weakness or a fear so terrifying that I will grab onto anything that shields me from having to confront it head on or face some kind of harsh truth or whatever the case may be. Honestly, it scares the crap out of me because from experience, I'd say these things have a way of escalating really quickly. You know, you make one concession or you shy away from something one time in a small way. Oftentimes it's sort of a wrap from there. Like you've made a choice, you've started a trajectory and you've dug the hole that much deeper. And so you're that much more inclined to grab at things that are not good in order to continue to avoid doing whatever you need to do. It's tricky. You know, I've heard that when it comes to having power over others, one path there is to figure out what people most want and then to give it to them or create the illusion that you're going to give it to them. And under that umbrella, a very powerful force is identifying what people are most afraid of and offering them the chance to alleviate that fear. That is one of the most powerful things I can think of in terms of gaining total allegiance, but it rarely works out for the person being led because you were already compromised in a certain way. And in order to avoid the difficult work of uncompromising yourself, you're compromising other things of value. So you're in essence, less capable of uncompromised than ever. And you become more and more dependent. But Mob is out here just representing this full on blast of reality. He's like this hammer of truth crashing down on this guy. But maybe there's another tact we could take. I have to tell him. I'm sorry to say this, but your president didn't give you peace. He implanted the idea that you can't survive on your own to chain you to the organization. Okay, this is a different tact. At this rate, if anything, you won't ever be able to come back. Right, exactly. Damn, Mob. Then tell me. Defend, what defend. Must defend my fragile existence. No ever understood this power I was born with. Oh, but Mob can offer this. Mob understands this. I've even accidentally sent my mother flying before. I am a sad fetus. Because I just wanted to... What did you want? I just wanted... A girlfriend. I just wanted to have friends. Yeah. I've made some friends in this company. All right, we can work with this. I actually have friends. That's how I know. They aren't your friends. 
They're liars. I mean, the truth can be in between, right? It can be both. You said that you didn't want to hurt anybody, didn't you? It might be hard for you to admit, but you have to know you're wrong. <laughs> Shut up! Oh, that created a crack. I'll be your friend, you have to <laughs> I knew that was coming. We can be friends. And as your friend, I'm going to blast you with this insane energy. Is he, like, stuck in his powers? That'll make it normal. So much of your energy is sad. You took it and turned it into your own power? <laughs> We're just making th making powers up on the fly here. That is some broken power. It's so beautiful. What am I seeing? He has a way of sharing his his pain with him, his empathy. He's the same as me. It's really beautiful. Friendship. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I, I love it. Stop this. None of those guys are of much help to you. You know that. Since you're my son, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. You're an accident. Even if it did happen to stir up some latent skills, the results were insignificant at best. So it's like a placebo effect? They had to believe in themselves. Or is just he doing it? Those happen to be my powers. Oh my god. I'm able oh to share my, my god. with anyone I choose. Holy crap. But at the same time, I can absorb other people's abilities as my own. Speaking of broken, I give this guy credit. Like, he's pretty thorough. He's doing a great job. <laughs> This is pretty damn cool. Only one absolute being can be the true protagonist of this world. Ah, he absolute thinks he's the protagonist. Being? Interesting. I guess villains always do. Does that mean you're the one who set my house on fire? Whoops. Oh, you're probably pissed about that. I'm not mad anymore. Yeah, things have changed. I mean, look at what your own father has done to you. Yeah, it's a big shock when your dad tries to take over the world. Whoa, he's changed. It's not the same kid that started up. Started season one. He said you'd beaten him so badly he couldn't bear to watch and came downstairs. Aww. He felt so pathetic for not stepping in. He wanted to disappear. Oof. So then Serizawa lost, I take it. I felt that. I'm grateful to him. Even so, I don't understand the need for us to hurt people. I've been too scared. This feels so much better. So I just didn't. But if my happiness can only come from someone else's tears, then it's not something I want in the first place. Oh man, it breaks my heart. That's not easy. Respect to that guy. I think that's one of the hardest lessons and something people don't really prepare us for when dealing with manipulative or unhealthy relationships, you know? We're all really adept at talking about like toxic relationships and pointing out abuse and being outside observers and seeing an issue with a particular dynamic and being an outside observer watching things go down and sort of being outside enough, not having skin in the game enough to sort of easily see a course of action that leads to just dispensing with the whole thing, like just get out of it or whatever, right? But the reality is for the people engaged in it, there's a really good reason why they're in there. There's a really good reason why they're stuck. And I'm not talking at all about people's fault. I'm just saying it's rarely just that, you know, it's also going to be ways in which those relationships really benefited them. Moments of real sweetness and intensity and joy, ways in which it shook up one's life in a positive way. And I think it's a mistake not to address that in trying to reconcile the problem because for the person looking to better their lives and improve the, their situation, whether it's by working through issues or by just getting out of a certain relationship or whatever it may be, it sets them up for failure by presenting them with a scenario that they themselves don't feel is accurate, right? So like, let's say this is a romantic relationship and Umbrella Dude really loves Gary's father. Outside observers can come in and say, Gary's father is just a monster, get rid of him. But for Umbrella Dude, Gary's father may have monster-like elements he's aware of, but means so much more than that. And so there's already a disconnect with that advice. And even if Umbrella Dude was to try to stand on that sentiment, to try to get the strength or leverage to get out, it wouldn't last very long because those doubts would creep back in. Like, oh, but remember this good time? You know, remember all this joy and, and laughter and happiness we shared together? That's not monstrous. Maybe I'm being too hard on him, you know, that kind of thing. I think the best defense or best approach to most things is trying to get as close to reality as possible, not setting yourself up for failure by trying to lean on lies or create emotional momentum. I mean, I think that's effective for some people. It's just that there are dangers in it, especially for people who are really conscientious, like Umbrella Dude obviously is. Mob was sort of shifting through different hacks there in the exchanges, but the ones that feel best to me are the ones that are sort of more nuanced it's like yeah he did a good thing for you you know like yeah you were sort of in a rough shape you were playing video games for 15 years and you were playing sort of a boring looking video game at that living in mommy's basement not that there's anything wrong with that i've been there too and it's great that you got out in the world and i'm sure you guys shared a real bond in certain aspects certain elements and you deserve friendship you know you deserve love you deserve that but is this what you want look around you what makes you think you couldn't have both you know what makes you think you couldn't have love and have this companionship without selling your soul for it and doing things you feel fundamentally in your core are wrong the guy did a lot of good work. Trash will never be Umbrella dude. More than trash. Well, there it is. <laughs> There's the truth. Bonding with them is an empty and meaningless gesture. Yes, you've told us your and philosophy. It's very day, compelling. I am wholly complete while on my own. Yes, you are so complete and amazing. And so you keep talking about that. People need other people in their lives. And someday you'll need them too. When that day comes, you're going to regret it. 
Look at this cast. When you need somebody to talk well earned. To Even that dude. My dad has the ability to give people his energy while stealing theirs. Meanwhile, I can barely even move. If that's the case, maybe I can help you. I got some similar. Amazing. I just came up with it five seconds ago on a whim. I suggest you evacuate. I'm going to do my best. I'm your real father you now. Oh, here we go. He has the potential to become my mortal enemy. He already is. What do you think, Regan? Any insight? At first glance, yes. Mob may look unreliable, but you can't deny his strength. You're talking about his insane telekinesis, right? No. Talking about his heart. What makes him truly great is his ability to tell people exactly how he feels. Mob's honest nature helps others. Uh <laughs> Dimple interrupts that great breakdown. Paper Dimple. Even among those who happen to be blessed with the gift of ESP, my powers surpass each one. When I came to that realization, it appeared as though the entire world could fit right in the palm of my hand. Must have felt great. The same age you two are now. Another potential future for Mob. He's the antithesis of Mob's journey. My goal in life is to leave a huge mark upon this world. And now is the time for that goal to come to fruition. It feels really empty though. Like for what? But apparently, show you have become a failure. You need to shut your mouth. Uh oh, Still, triggered. Game, show me everything you've got. <laughs> Oh man, this is rough. All right, yeah, this is actually gonna be a real challenge. It's been set up pretty well. You've wasted my time. Don't move. Hmm. This thing's loaded, by the way. <laughs> I love the confidence. Showed up with a gun Stays. loaded with salt. I'm not sensing any kind of power from you at all. You'll stay out of this if you know what's good for you. I don't know what I was thinking, letting you go off alone like that. My mind was probably distracted by all the weirdness going on around me. That's forgivable. I wonder if this isn't in some way closing a bit of a circle where in season one he's talking about it's okay to run away. There's sort of no running at this point. Now, instead of Reagan sort of bearing the full brunt and wanting to shield Mob from life, it seems like they're kind of here together more as peers, which is well earned after the journey they've had together, especially considering the, the Reagan episodes. About Boss Giovanni, I feel like his philosophy was perfectly chosen to run counter to Mob. I think Reagan's right. And basically spelling out one of the key points of Mob's character is that Mob sort of doesn't let himself get pulled along by false friends, you know, by easy outs from dealing with tough questions. Cheap ego boosts, reframing value in very convenient terms in order to feel better about himself and not have to do difficult work of improving himself and staying humble, staying open, staying honest, staying compassionate. And he happens to be able to share that gift with others. And it comes across as beautiful in the show, but I think maybe what's not as clear is how difficult it is. It's really hard not to fall down those holes. And this guy's sort of the opposite. You know, he's what Mob could have been if Mob took that power level. And that was sort of the end of the analysis of what humanity was. It's like, I'm the best, I'm the greatest because of this very specific thing. And so that basically gives me the right to end the assessment there and sort of never grow and rest on some of my most basic animalistic least nuanced traits, which I suspect would ultimately be empty. I mean, the guy is going to conquer the world and that's going to feel great for a while. And then it's going to be like, well, what else is there? And he's going to be sort of back at square one, having to do an internal journey that he's been putting off this whole time. I've been sort of blown away recently connecting this to real life by watching celebrity news. Like I don't seek it out at all, but I feel like there's just been a lot of it recently that's just been widely circulated. And if there was ever a reminder that things like power and money and fame didn't make you happy by themselves, there's a lot of that right now to look at. Yet I feel like that is a very classic trap. And amazingly, and maybe somewhat terrifyingly, I think the reason why that route is so alluring is because it's actually easier in some ways than what Mob does. Self-reflection, self-honesty, allowing yourself to get crushed, you know, like all the superfluities to be destroyed so you can build really good, cool things in there is real pain, at least at first. The rewards come later, I think. I failed as a master. You That's not it. I'll buy you some takoyaki on our way home. He calls you master, even though you lack the skills to see how powerful I am. So you're also somebody who tricks others and steals from them. Interesting. I mean... <laughs> ESP is great and all, but it's not the only cool power people can have. He's giving him the mob speech. This is great. Off the top of my head, I can think of four ways to beat you. He's playing an interesting game here. Join your side. And what good does that do me? I'm really good at making websites. I can season your food as well. Allow me to fill you in on some powers other than ESP. I'm gonna slap you in the face with my of. steel That's balls. The first one. It's something that Esper should really be extremely cautious about. And that is... Strike. Yeah, I was gonna say, punch in the face. <laughs> Popped him like a balloon. What a pair okay. of Okay. He doesn't need to exist in physical bodies. That was just one way. Got three left. It's all going according to Reagan's plan. Right? <laughs> Reagan didn't just get incinerated, I'm presuming. Trust in Reagan, just like we trust in Mob. 
Yeah, he's got the umbrella. Oh, it actually is Umbrella Dude. And it got incinerated. Beautiful. He's free, facing the outside world. The umbrella actually ended up being a really great metaphor. Rage. Those who don't understand the feelings of others. What's the point? <laughs> Some people have to learn the hard way. All right. I mean, we, we did that. We did the speech. We tried it. Have an action scene for fun. Woke up a beast. Holy crap. <laughs> yeah, Reese said it. Are those plants? Catching plants? We're gonna catch them, right? Yes. It seems I'm now in a situation where anybody can betray me. What a surprise. I wonder why they would betray you. These are highly inaccurate. That's all they have going for them right now. Well, you're enthusiastic, aren't Not phased. Despite being pushed through a building. He's only at 10%. That's your 100%, then this is pointless. I think it's time to pull a My Hair Academia and go a million percent. <laughs> Whatever that means. Now I'll be able to hit you with everything. All my power and all my rage. Oh man, it ends there. The building floating in the air, huh? Just like that. For a lot of the series, Mob's been worried about his powers, but it kind of feels different now, him going full strength, if it even is full strength, because he's sort of done a lot of the underlying stuff, and I think it's pretty safe to have faith in the dude, you know? Speaking of honesty, you know, the more he can look at the darkness and sort of really know it, and really be aware of it, maybe the safer he can wield it, if that makes sense. This is always a sad moment for me, when I realize there's only one episode of available episodes left. It's like, you want to just linger in this moment forever, but you can't. But yeah, we're going into the final episode of season two, and it's pretty clear that Mob is going to go nuts. In this case, I feel it's very well earned. It's like, you've been good, Mob, you know, take the gloves off for once. But I suspect it won't all be power. There's going to be something in there as well, because it wouldn't be a Mob victory without the corresponding heart as well.